welcome to the Old Time Radio Hour. I'm your host, Justine Ward, and each week we bring you a classic show from radio's golden age. This week we have another 20th century science fiction with Tom Corbett's Space Cadet, based on a story by Robert A. Heinlein. The series was an early TV series with the same cast acting on radio and television. The sponsor was Kellogg's Pep Breakfast Cereal. The show was a half-hour format and aired for a couple of seasons in the early 1950s. Today we have Tom Corbett Adventure in two parts. This is part one of Tom Corbett's Space Cadet, The Missing Rocket Scout, first broadcast January 8th, 1952 on ABC. Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal, invite you to rocket into the future with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off minus five, four, three, two, one, zero. rockets blast off to distant planets and far-flung stars, we take you to the age of the conquest of space with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. million miles out in the cold black depths of space, a small rocket scout blasts across the invisible path marking the orbit of Jupiter on course to Earth. In the narrow cylindrical cockpit forward near the nose of the silvery ship, the pilot transmits a routine teleceiver call across the void. And in a small metal hut on Mars, a sleepy-eyed operator shakes himself awake as the call crackles in his earphones. Rocket Scout 4J9 from Space Station M5. Go ahead. This is 4J9, Space Mail Service. Tax College, Earth. Position. Crossing orbit of Jupiter. Northwest quadrant. Five degrees over plane of the Atlantic. Holding course 160. Parker, what's wrong with you? Can't trouble like Parker, Parker, come in. Hello, Parker. Can you hear me? Parker. Rocket Scout 4J9 from Space Station M5. Come in. Great, Ganymede. M5 to all space stations. M5 to all space stations. Stand by. Disaster alert. Stand by. Here's the story, Captain Strong. Two days ago, Captain Mitch Parker was inbound from Titan on the Earth Titan mail run. He made routine teleceiver contact with Space Station M5 on Mars to get position and standard data. Suddenly, contact was broken for some unknown reason. We haven't been able to raise him since. Any search operations underway, Commander Arkwright? Of course. I sent all patrol ships into the area immediately. Even pulled rocket liners and space freighters off orbit. But they haven't found a trace of Parker... Or his ship. Well, it's only been two days, sir. I realize that. But the ships that are looking for Parker now have to be released. I'm organizing a full-scale rescue operation to begin tomorrow. Do you think your cadet crew is experienced enough for an assignment like this? For the Polaris crew? Of course, sir. It'll be a long and difficult search, Strong. Even dangerous. Don't worry about them, sir. Tom Corbett, Astro, and Roger Manning are the best cadets in the academy. In spirit, teamwork, and cooperation, they excel at... Oh, uh, excuse me, Strong. Uh, Yes, sir. Come in. Polaris unit reporting, sir. Great. Jupiter. Tom, what happened to you? What happened to all of them? They look like they've been through a reaction chamber. Well, Tom? The officer of the day told us to report to you for disciplinary action, Commander Arkwright. Disciplinary action? What's the charge? We're charged with fighting and wrecking the furniture in our dormitory, sir. I see. Well, Captain Strong, so this is your Polaris crew. Is this what you call teamwork, spirit, and cooperation? (laughs) 
Well, boys, I managed to square it with Commander Arkwright for you. He won't take any disciplinary action until this mission is over. Oh, that's great, Captain Strong. Well, I knew you'd come through for us, But Skipper. now I want to know what this is all about. Why, uh... Who started uh, it this time? Well, I'm waiting for an answer. Sir, I, I think I can explain. I'd be interested in something like that, Corbett. Well... Astro and Roger had had a difference of opinion, and I tried to settle it, and Roger disagreed with me, and Astro disagreed too, and, well, I disagreed with both of them, and the next thing I knew that, well, the bunk fell on Astro and the table was knocked over, and... And you just tore your uniform, and Roger happened to grow that black eye, hmm? and Astro accidentally cut his lip. Uh, I guess so. All right. Now get this, all of you. The next time I catch the three of you fighting, I'm going to make earthworms out of you. You'll do all your rocketeering in the mess hall with a bucket and mop. You understand? Right, yes, sir. All right. Dismissed. Oh, what a crew. Uh, Captain Strong here. This is Commander Ogre. Oh, yes, sir. Alert your crew for immediate blast off. Immediate? But I thought you said One that... One of the space freighters moved a trace of reaction mass between Jupiter and the asteroid belt. From Parker's ship? No way of telling it. But if he jettisoned his fuel, he may be in serious trouble and completely helpless. We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment, so stand by. Listen to this jet plane streak through the air. That's a Republic Thunder Jet up on a test flight. Jets like that are pioneers of the sky, leading the way to the air age of tomorrow. And the men who fly those jets are pioneers, too, blazing a trail for youth to follow. Would you be able to fly a jet? Well, maybe not right now, but you can build yourself up so that you'll be ready when the time comes. And one important thing to do right now is to have a good, nourishing breakfast every single morning with Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. Then, while you're thinking about flying jets, you can be taking on the builder-upper food values that jet pilots must have to do a good job. So start now. Eat plenty of Kellogg's Pep. Get all the strength and muscle-building food values that Pep can give you. And say, when you taste that swell Pep flavor, you want a second bowl full. Ask Mom to get the better-than-ever build-up cereal, Kellogg's Pep. P E P. Pep. And listen for news about the swell prize you get in every package of Kellogg's Pep in just a few minutes. Attention, crew. We've cleared Earth's atmosphere on course to asteroid belt. A giant search operation has begun. A search through the vast reaches of space for a missing rocket scout. And now, as the rocket crew of Polaris blasts through the void at full space speed, Captain Strong briefs his cadet crew. Now, according to the last report from Central Control, traces of reaction mass have been found near the asteroid belt. Mass that might have been jettisoned from Captain Parker's ship. Jettisoned, Captain? Or would there have been a leak in the hull? No, that remains to be seen. In any case, the Vega, the Hydra, and the three rocket destroyers are already tracking down the mass. We're going to take a shortcut. What do you mean, shortcut, sir? Corbett, if you were on a rocket scout ship and developed trouble, what would you do? Well, if I couldn't repair it in space, I'd call for help. You'd need it. Cut that, Manning. Now, if your communications were destroyed, what would you do? Well, I'd try to sit down somewhere and see if I could repair her. Right. Now, wouldn't it be logical to assume that that's what Captain Parker did? But where could he land, sir? The only space junk of any size around here is in the asteroid belt. Right, Astro. And we're going to go through the asteroid belt and look for him. Through it? Oh, brother, this is going to be rough. No, rough isn't the word, Manning, but I think it's our best bet. I guess you're right, Captain. If the ship can take it, we can, sir. All right. You can relax for a while now. Maintain your usual four-hour deck watches until we reach our search position. I'm going topside to contact Commander Rockwright for further orders. And, by the way, in case you don't remember, Academy regulations hold good on shipboard. No fighting. Yes, sir. 
Lucky thing for you guys. What do you mean, Roger? That no fighting order. I'd like to wrap you guys up good. Oh, now listen, Roger. Have you still got that chip on your shoulder? Let's forget it. We were all off our orbit. No, Junior, only you. We're all in the same unit, so I have to ride along with you. But that doesn't mean I like Why, it. Why, you big sore head? Hold it, Astro. Look, for the last time, Roger, you're making too much of this. Astro didn't mean what he said, and neither did I. So how about shaking hands and forgetting it? Uh, if Tom is willing, it's all mine. Fellas, I got a hot space flash for you. Go blow your jets. Control deck to radar bridge. Check in. Radar bridge, hi. How are we doing, Manny? Now, don't worry about the small pieces of space junk. We can shed those. It's the big stuff we have to avoid. But don't worry, sir. I can play tag with these asteroids all day. Now, don't get smart, Manning. One of those chunks of iron can rip a hole in our side and tear us apart. End transmission. Now, Tom, call Astro. Tell him to cut down to one quarter. Aye, sir. Control deck to power deck. Power deck, aye. Astro, cut space speed one quarter. We're going to cut straight across the asteroid belt. Tom, turn on the magnoscope and watch every passing asteroid big enough to hold a spaceship. Aye, sir. We're taking a long chance on a slim hope. Right up, reach the control link. There's a big one bearing down on us. Ship's steering vanes 2.2, starboard, one degree up. Hear that, Astro? Got it, Tom. Steering vanes set. Give us a short blast, Astro. Back to Get a good look at it, Tom. Yes, sir. There was no ship on that space, hobo. They're coming fast, Captain Strong. Two of them bearing down on us. You'll have to walk a tightrope between them. Old steering vents, 1.6 to 4.2. Tom, Tom, Tom. Steering vanes set. Blast the way, Astro. Hang on. Oh, that was a little too close. No rocket ship on either one of those babies, sir. Oh, this is a space-happy thing to do, but... No, we're too deep in it now to turn back. I'm risking four lives and a rocket cruiser on a million-to-one shot. If we find Captain Parker, it'll be worth it, sir. Sure, but will our luck hold out? Point four degrees to port, five degrees up. Astro, don't spare the neutrons. A long blast this time. Hold tight, open it up. Hang on, I'll be clearing it. Yes, Are you all right? I'm seeing stars of the fifth magnitude. Yeah, I'm seeing a few myself. Oh. You, better, you better call Astro and Roger. Aye, nice, sir. Control deck to power deck. Check in. Check in? I'm ready to check out. <laughs> Astro's okay, sir. All right, Astro. Go over the power deck for damage. Aye, right, sir. Control deck to radar bridge. Check in. Any damage up there? You're kidding. Not now, I'm not. So it looks like we're sitting pretty, doesn't it? Flying through the asteroid belt completely blind. Well, boys, I've checked the ship completely. Outside of the blackout on the radar bridge, we're still in one piece. Yeah, but how about that blackout, sir? We're sitting ducks for every piece of space junk in the belt. Well, not since we've cut our power, Roger. We're drifting in a steady orbit now, along with all the other space junk. Chances are we won't be hit, uh, unless we try to break out. Yeah, but if we don't break out, Skipper, we'll drift around in this junkyard forever. We can't even call for help. Well, the damage is to the antenna and the main power relay. The relay can be fixed up inside the ship, but the antenna means a trip outside on the hull. Oh, brother, nothing I like better than waltzing around in space. Well, start practicing right now, then, Roger. You, Astro, and I are going outside. Tom, you'll stay in here and work on the relay. Aye, aye, sir. All right. Suit up, boys, and meet me.